video. Hi guys, this is Connie, back for some more Connie Reads the Dogs of Winter. We're on chapter 7, Pretend. Here's what we're going to do, Tanya said, leading me up the long stairs to the world above the underground. We're going to say you're my little brother, my sick little brother, and we need money to buy you medicine. I frowned. That's a lie. I'm not your little brother. My mother told me to always tell the truth. Tanya sighed. Haven't you ever played pretend, Mish? I nodded, although I had never played pretend with anyone else. So that's what we're doing. We're pretending we're brother and sister and you're sick. I bet you're real good at pretending to be sick. I clutched my stomach and moaned. Good, good, she said, clapping her hands. Now let's hear you cough. I hacked and spat. Like that, I asked. She hugged me to her. Just like that, she said. And if I'm really good at pretending, will you help me find my mother? She m must my hair. Sure, Mishka. So there, on the streets of the city, on a cold fall day, I performed. I clutched and moaned and coughed and spat. I squeezed tears from my eyes while Tanya grasped at the people, all the people hurrying by. Please help us, she said, plucking at a coat sleeve, a string bag. My little brother is sick. We need money for medicine. Most dropped coins in her outstretched hand without bothering to stop. Soon the coins clink clinked in her coat pocket. One man shoved a bill in her hand and said, get him a coat for God's sake. One woman gave us both a yellow balloon with a ribbon on it. No one asked where our mother was. By afternoon, I was too hungry to play pretend. We have plenty of money now to eat whatever we want, I said. Tanya jingled the coin coins in her pocket. We don't use money for food, silly. We use it to make us happy. Food will make me very happy, I pointed out. We steal food, she said. It's easy enough. My mouth dropped open. I stepped back, shaking my head. I can't steal. Stealing is wrong. Who says? Tanya shrugged. My mother says. Her eyes blazed. She slapped the side of my face. Wake up, Mish. Do you see your mother here? Do you see my mother here? Or Eula's mother? Or Victor's? Or, Posh or Pasha's? I wiped up my wet eyes and shook my head. Her face softened. She smoothed my hair. I'm sorry, she said, but you need to learn. We make our own rules, and our number one rule is to do whatever we must to take care of ourselves. If that means steal, we steal. If that means lie, we lie. Understand? I nodded. I touched the bruise blooming on my cheek. Tanya peered down at me, hands on her hips like my mother did when she was about to tell me what a trouble bo troublesome boy I could be. Okay, she sighed. I'll get you food. <clears throat> she scanned the plaza. People filled the benches, tilting their faces up to the fall sun, paper bags at their feet. She pointed at a fat man sitting on the edge of the fountain. That man will need a lot of food to fill his big, fat belly. I nodded. Surely if he knew I was lost without my mother and very hungry, he would share his lunch with me. Tanya pinched my shoulder. Here's the plan. You pretend you're playing in the fountain, right? Pretend. Pretend? I nodded. Get close to him and splash him good. But, I said, that will make him angry, and then he won't share his lunch with us. Tanya rolled her eyes. God, you're stupid. The whole point is to make him angry. Angry enough to chase you. Then, she said, grinning, I'll steal his lunch. I looked at Tanya and at the fat man sitting on the edge of the big fountain. The brown paper bag at his feet bulged like his belly. The fat man fed us well. My famous baseball player shoes, or my famous basketball player shoes, were wet, and so were my pants up to my knees. I shivered as I licked the last of the sausage grease from my fingers. With my belly full, guilt crept into my arms and legs like a spider and gnawed at my heart. I fingered the button in my pocket. My mother would slap me for what I did. Tanya stood up and stretched. She jingled the coins in her pocket. Come on, she said. 
I trotted behind Tanya, following her through the uh, streets, still looking for the red coat. Brown coats, gray coats, black coats. Was that a red coat? I tripped over something and flew through the air. Tanya yanked me up by my arm. Watch where you're going, she said. I looked back. I tripped over a boy lying on the sidewalk. He was, was he pretending to be sick too? A fly crawled across his face. He was missing his shoes. Someone would stop. Someone would brush the fly away from his face. Someone would gather him in their arms. But no one did. They walked past him and around him and even over him as if he were nothing at all. As if he were a ghost. Come on, Tanya said, jerking my arm hard. A gust of cold wind blew scraps of pa newspaper down the sidewalk and blew the fly off the boy's sleeping face. And that's the end of chapter seven. <clears throat> what a sad book, y'all. Why y'all want me to read this thing? Be careful with that and enjoy, please and thank you. And I will see you for the next chapter. Bye.